This is basically folks getting out of jail and they are moving in with a family. That family is going to try to, you know, get them to a place where they can come back out into society. I have no idea what to expect. I've never watched the season. So we're going to get into this season together. So let's get right into this recap. I'm really struggling to understand why anybody would agree to this. This seems like a recipe for disaster. Now I'm not even five minutes into the show and I'm just like, this can't go well. Like a lot of these people were arrested for stealing. Armed robbery. And y'all just gonna let them in your house. There's not enough money in the world. There's not enough loyalty in the world. I'm so, so sorry. This is Veda, who is 58, and Anna Lisa, pretty name, very pretty name, and she's 52. They met each other from a mutual friend, and they've been together ever since. They don't mention if they're married or not, which, I mean, whatever. And we are bringing an inmate straight out of prison into our home. I just want to say, both of y'all are freaking crazy. Okay, I'm just, I'm sorry, but both of you are freaking crazy. This is the inmate that Annalisa and Veda will be having in their home. And as you can see here, I'm saying as you can see here, but I'm still going to read it off. I'm going to read it off for the audience members that aren't able to read this right now. Maybe they're in the kitchen or whatever. So Mark is 25 years old. He is currently in Claylum. Girl, you couldn't give me a harder name to say. Hmm. Mark is in Claylum Bay Correction Center. He's serving seven years for a robbery with a firearm possession. Now we're on a call with Mark and he's given us his exact, you know, exactly what he was arrested for in clear English. Because sometimes when you see these charges, unless you're in law enforcement, you're not going to have any idea what the hell they're talking about. Mark says that he was charged with robbery in the first degree and they also got him for unlawful possession of a firearm. Mark says when he gets out of prison, he's going to be staying with Annalisa and Veda, but he really doesn't know much about them at all. Mark says he's been incarcerated for so long, there's gonna be some fun. We're gonna party until the sun comes up. In these 50-somethings home, you think you're going to be partying it up. That just really took away from the effect of what I was trying to say, whatever. You think you're gonna be having a party with these two 50-somethings? Anyway, I don't, I don't see this as turning out well. You might be somebody's worst nightmare. Good grief. Annalisa says that Mark's uncle, Pee Wee, couldn't use his regular name for this program? I guess not. But Pee Wee, before he died, asked Veda to take care of his family. And this is the reason why they're going to take Mark into their home. So Deasha, I think is how you say it. Okay, I got Tiasia right with Young and Pregnant. I can get Diaja, okay, girl. So Diaja is a daughter of Annalisa from a previous relationship. That's this young lady right here in the green. Annalisa says that her and Veda have been together since Diaja was six years old. Veda asks Diaja if she's excited to come get this young man. And Diaja says, no, no, I'm not. Diaja says that she has a lot of concerns. Who is to know that this man is not going to reoffend? Annalisa says that's the risk that they take. Girl, that's not a risk that you should be taking at all. That's dangerous as hell. This man committed an armed robbery, armed, and you're going to just let this man come to your home to stay. And you're going to be able to sleep at night? Because, girl, I would be sleeping with one eye open. Excuse me. My eyes would never close. Neither one of them. They both would be wide open. Veda says that Annalisa is going to be the bad cop. Veda, I'm not going to tell you what I feel like you look like right now. Okay. That would be rude. And as I said in my last video, I try my best not to be mean on purpose. Like, I don't just say things to get laughs on this channel. Most things are just random. I just say stuff. And like I said, that's why I'm paying more attention to what I say and how I say things in certain instances. But in this instance here, though, I can just call it how it is. You let Annalisa call all the shots. I guess she's wearing the pants in this family. I mean, however dynamic works for you in your household. Okay, that's fine. 
Annalisa says that she's really not the one to play with. Ma'am, you, you've been in prison for seven years or more? Because I would love to know what you think you have in your body, okay, that makes you so much stronger than a mother freaking felon who's been in jail for almost a decade. Okay, did you serve time yourself? I'm curious. I just want to know. Did you serve time yourself? Annalisa says if Mark wants to try her, you you will all, all of, all of us, we will all see who Annalisa is. Annalisa's friend Rose comes over to the house. Also DJ, Annalisa's godson, they're all there to talk about Mark's arrival. So DJ says it's going to be hard letting a freaking criminal in your house. What are his charges? And Annalisa says robbery. And this is Rose's facial expression once she says robbery. DJ says that Mark is going to act nice for a little while. And then he's going to come up in there stealing your stuff. Diaja says that her family is everything. And when it comes to her family, she does not play. She says that she doesn't want Mark bringing his past to the house. But that's exactly what he's bringing. What else is he bringing? Is he bringing a, a four-year degree? Is he bringing a 20-year career? No. He's bringing his seven years in prison to the house. But while they're having their conversation, Mark calls on the phone and Diaja would like to speak to him. And y'all need to give me props for remembering how to pronounce her name. Annalisa hands the phone to Veda and Veda tells Mark that he's looking forward to seeing him and yada 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 so diaja takes the phone because she wanted to speak to mark and he asks her how do you feel about me coming to live with your mom and dad and before she could even answer mark asks how tall are you and i'm like why the hell does that matter diaja tells mark that she's five nine girl you're five nine five nine wow you are amazon woman huh Okay, girl, I always wished I was a little bit taller. I'm only 5'2". Mark asks Diaja, is she going to be around a lot? So I see, I see where you're going with this. And hell no. Mark, slow your roll. You better go find some random Gucci on the street. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, do that. don't look good. It don't, you even asking her these questions don't even look good. Diaja says that Mark flirting with her kind of took her off guard. The producer says to Annalisa, isn't it a little odd that Mark is hitting on your daughter? Veda, may I say that you are the weirdest person I've ever seen in my life? Why would you say this? And this is, this is probably because she's not your blood daughter that you're saying this. This is your stepdaughter. Still shouldn't make a difference because you've been around Diaja since she was six years old. But Veda says it doesn't seem unnatural because he's a man. He's been locked up for seven years. Excuse me? And he's coming to your house where she most likely is going to be predominantly. And he's already trying to lay. Sorry, I probably can't say that on YouTube, but he's but he's laying that trap. Veda says that you hear a nice voice on the phone. You, you know what? I'm saying too much. Let me let Veda say what he was saying that I thought was so weird. And I want you while you're watching this, I want you to look at Annalisa's body language because it looks to me like she's annoyed. It don't seem like it's not unnatural because man, he in prison and you hear a sweet voice over the phone. You're gonna immediately respond to it. Me personally, I don't see a problem. Look at her body language. Um, I see a problem. So do I, I ma'am. Annalisa tells Mark that she's excited to meet him at the prison, hangs up the phone, and she asks everybody, so what do you guys think? Diaja says, it's gonna be a disaster. Now we head on over to Minneapolis, Minnesota. We have David, he's 37 years old. He is a high school teacher and he teaches social studies. David says it's the first day of summer and the next day he doesn't have to teach tomorrow, which is great because he's getting ready to have someone in his home. This is Aaron. He is 46 years old. That age seems familiar, whatever. Anyway, he is in, y'all, you and y'all, these names, these names are really killing me. He's in Lino Lakes or Lino Lakes? Child, I want to say Lino Lakes because I'm thinking of Lionel Richie right now and I ain't going to sing none of his songs, even though. I could if I really wanted to. He is in Lionel Lakes Correction Center. He's serving two and a half years and his charges are sale of controlled substance, theft, drug possession, and evading arrest. Aaron says that he, in addition to his other charges, had a few high-speed chases. He has two daughters. One is 26, the other is 24. He says those bridges between his daughters have been burned. 
and it's going to take a lot to restore them at this age sir you might not have a good relationship with your daughters ever if this is all they've seen from you um high speed car chases and selling drugs and stealing and all that stuff they may not want to have anything to do with you david says most of his family is in ann arbor michigan where he grew up cynthia was his mentor teacher his first year of teaching so david tells cynthia you know how i told you somebody was going to come living here and she says yes and David says, well, they're really coming. He says, you know how I've been working with people in prison for many years. David says, in this case, he's been talking to Aaron a couple of years now. Aaron is coming out of prison tomorrow. And the number one thing for people coming out of prison is that they need housing. Cynthia's facial expression is literally saying, what the F? Cynthia asks, what are Aaron's original charges? And David says he really doesn't know. You've been talking to this man like on the phone for three entire years. You're talking to this man for three entire years. You got him coming to your house. And you don't know what his charges were for getting locked up for two and a half years. Not very smart, David. David says to Cynthia that he sounds like a nice, kind person on the phone. Is that why he's in prison, David? Because he's nice and kind? I understand that everybody that goes to prison is not, they are not necessarily guilty, but I'm just saying, everybody ain't innocent. David says that he thinks that it was meth. So what's the truth? Do you either do know or you don't know, which is it? Anyway, Cynthia says, well, that's kind of messed up that it was meth because meth is so easily available. Cynthia says that David is pretty idealistic. Cynthia asks if there's some type of backup plan. And she said this violent subculture could come into David's home. And that is what worries her, honestly. I can't stand when people talk like they have marbles in their mother freaking mouth. David talks like he has marbles in his mouth. Damn, that's annoying. I had to put the closed caption on this joint. All right. Now, what David said was that the best case scenario is that Aaron gets out of prison. He gets on his dream horse, figures out where he wants to go, and they become good friends. The worst case scenario is it doesn't work well and then they have to figure out how to get out of a bad situation. I see this man preaching about the Lord and now he's standing in front of fire. What the hell's going on here? This is Jim. He's 54 years old and he's a pastor. And this is Marisol. She's 47 and she is also a pastor. Marisol and Jim are the founders of Rock House Ministries and Programs. Jim says their ministry is there to help anyone that wants a clean and sober life. Their ministry, Jim says, accepts people off the street, people that give them a call. And that is how they met Mickey. When Mickey called them, he really let them know, you know, he has no other option. So Jim says that they said they're not just allowing someone into their ministry, but they're allowing someone right out of jail into their home for the first time. This is Mickey. He's 43 years old. He's in, here's another crazy name that I can't pronounce. What the hell? Mike's, Meg's, Meg's, anyway, county jail. He's serving 10 months and his charges are failure to appear for court, driving with a revoked license and evading arrest. My name's Mickey, 43 years old, but I've been in and out of jail for the last nine years of my life. I'm currently incarcerated in Meg's County Jail for failure to appear, driving on revoked, driving on suspended and evading arrest. I went on the run for two years, and then the family hunters finally got me and brought me back. I've been here ever since. I'm really sorry, but if you think that, first of all, he talks super fast. If you think I was going to get all that information he just gave without having to have 20 tapes, you got another thing coming. Okay, so, so glad I was able to play that for you. Mickey says that he does want to do better for himself. Mickey says that out there in the real world, everybody that he knows is involved in drugs, and he is not going to fall back into that. So now David is announcing this to his parishioners that he's accepted a person into this program. So David is explaining that this, this gentleman will be moving into their house by the sound of the crowd. They're a little confused, probably don't like this idea. I mean, looking at these facial expressions, they don't look very happy. David explains that he's hoping that the atmosphere of family is going to make a big difference in Mickey's life. And one of the parishioner asks, how long has he been behind bars? And David says for nine years. So Marisol says that she's still very, very nervous about the situation because she doesn't know this man. She feels like she's always going to have to watch her back and she does not know him. 
Jim says to be honest with us. He really doesn't know Mickey very well. He spoke to him a few times and that's pretty much it. But he's hopeful that everything is going to work out for the good, no matter what. So it's good to see a Christian couple on here. You know, it's good to see how they're going to handle this situation when it gets a little dirty, a little, a little murky. Uh, I, you know, I'm interested to see how they're going to handle that. Are you going to get on your knees and pray? Are you going to get the holy anointing olive oil? Like what, what are you guys going to do? So another parishioner says, I don't think you guys are taking this seriously enough. And I appreciate that you're speaking your mind and you're letting them know y'all are freaking crazy. Okay. He said, y'all are letting this man in your home. You don't know what he's going to be doing. You know, obviously this is church. Okay. I got to watch my language. I'm sorry, but I got to clean it up because they're Christians. Okay. But anyway, um, he says, y'all don't, he says, y'all don't really know what he's going to do when he comes into your home. Well, pastor David. I should call him Pastor Des. That's what he is. That's what they call him. That's what they call him. He says, don't think because I'm a pastor. Just to let everybody know. I'm going to let it be made known. Don't think because I'm a pastor that I'm weak. Nobody thinks pastors are weak, do they? I guess they. I guess somebody thinks that. I never thought that. Thank you for telling me his name. Damn, I need to know his name. He got sense in that head of his. That nice, perfectly round head. Anyway. Jake says he was surprised to hear that Pastor Jim was bringing Mickey into his home. He said Jim is a big guy, but that doesn't mean anything. Jim says for a woman to have another man come into their home, that's going to raise some concerns. Exactly. You should be protecting your home, not bringing some strange man from jail in there with your wife. You're supposed to cover your wife. You're supposed to protect your wife. That's not protecting your wife. Okay, that's just my freaking opinion. And... I really think all of you are batshit crazy, honestly. All of you. Every single one of you. I hate to say that you're going to get what you deserve. Because I'm not saying you deserve to be hurt. I'm not saying you deserved any of that. At all. At all. What I am saying, though, is that you guys are going into this with your eyes wide open. Okay? So, whatever happens, you guys have to be prepared for it. Marisol says that it makes her a little nervous. Okay, Jim, so call the whole thing off. What the hell? Jim says that they're putting everything on the line because they believe in what they're doing. This day, they're going to drive four hours to a hotel near the prison. Annalisa says tomorrow morning, they're going to wait outside the prison for Mark to get out. Diaja says the idea of Mark coming from prison and moving into her parents' home is a bit unsettling. Diaja says, however, she has her parents back, so she will be driving them to this prison. So they're on their way to the prison. And Diaja says, Mom, you've talked to him more than anybody. Diaja goes on to ask if she feels like she has some type of connection with him. Annalisa says she doesn't know what to expect at all. She asks her, how does she feel about Mark? Annalisa says that she's just going to take it day by day. Day by day. I know I've said that phrase before. Annalisa says that she thinks Mark might be a handful then why are you letting him in your house? None of y'all got brains, I swear it. Diaja says that she doesn't know his real intentions. She says actions speak louder than words. You can say whatever you want with your mouth. Diaja says that Mark is going to be living there. It's going to be a lot of personal and private situations going on. Annalisa says, I wish you would be a bit more supportive. Supportive of this mess? Why are me and Diaja the only two people in this situation that know that you guys are opening up your home to a very bad situation? It says that she's sick and tired of all the negativity that's coming from Diaja. So now we are in Gainesville, Texas. I have no idea where that is, but whatever. Now, this is the only couple that did not give their age. And honestly, I don't see the point of giving these people's ages anyway, to be quite honest. This is Daniel and Kathy. So the next person who will be moving in with Kathy and Daniel is Devin. He's 24 years old. Thank you. I can pronounce Colorado, darn it. He's in Colorado Territorial Correction Facility. He's serving three years. His charges are burglary, trespassing, auto trespassing. What the hell is that? I don't know what that is. And theft. I'm really an idiot. Obviously, he's talking about a car. Guys, just, just ignore that. Okay, guys, I'm not stupid, I swear. Devin says the reason why he's choosing to live with Kathy and Daniel is because he doesn't have a relationship with his mom and his grandparents are unable to take him in. 
what Devin is looking forward to the most is a new start, a new beginning. Kathy says she believes that his crime was burglary. And Daniel says that he believes that he was stealing to get money for drugs. Kathy tells Daniel that she doesn't think that anybody wanted to take him in at this point. She thinks that he's burned a lot of bridges. At 24? Damn. Bud and Penny are Devin's grandparents. And they approached Kathy and Daniel about their grandson. Apparently in the past, Devin has gone to the grandparents' home to parole to, but that didn't work out. So the truth comes out. They just don't want you at their house. Not that, oh, they can't have you. They don't have no room. They don't want you there. Kathy says at this point, the grandparents are worried about enabling him rather than supporting him. So basically the grandparents vetted out another couple, which I think is freaking weird. Um, I just think it's really weird because if this goes bad, this not only reflects on Daniel and Kathy, you know, having a bad situation in their home, but you grandparents, y'all gonna feel bad. Okay. Granted, y'all didn't want him in y'all house, but dump Devin off on a whole nother couple that's not even related to him. <laughs> oh, okay. So Daniel tells Kathy, we have to be firm. And if he messes up at any time, you got to get the hell out of here. Daniel says that he thinks it's a good idea to move completely away and out of the area where you were around the bad influences. So Daniel told Devin's grandmother that he would go to Colorado and bring him back to Texas. I'm not trying to be ages, but do these old people really think that they're going to take this young Bucking, I'm sorry, sweet honey buckins on my mind, forgive me. Um, <laughs> but do y'all really think that y'all gonna be able to like prevent this young 24 year old, you know, kid from he? I know he's grown, okay. When y'all please don't take any offense when I say kid, that's actually a compliment. I will give anything to be called a kid again, all right. Anyway, y'all are a little older, a little weaker in the bones. I know my knees crack, my knees hurt, so I can't imagine how y'all's feels. And y'all really think y'all going to be able to prevent this young guy from doing what the hell he wants in your house. I really think everybody on this show is delusional. So Daniel's flying to Montrose, Colorado to meet Devin's sister, Carissa or Carissa. Don't know. We'll find out. Daniel and Carissa will pick up Devin when he is released from prison the following day. And you can see it says here, Daniel is flying to Montrose, Colorado to meet Devin's sister, Carissa. Or is it Carissa? Oh, we'll find out. So Kathy says to Daniel while they're driving off, I guess, to the airport, I'm really concerned about your health. And, you know, don't be picking up no heavy suitcases. So so you guys are elderly, obviously, because you did. That's why you didn't want to give your ages. I mean, I could look it up and I can see your ages online, I'm sure. But anyway, I ain't got time. So you're going into this as older people and you have health conditions. Well, good luck with this. Oh, these are not just minor health conditions. It's a little more extensive than I thought. I do have health issues. I've had quadruple bypass. I've had brain surgery and I've had congestive heart failure. And it may wear me down, but I'll be okay. So Devin calls Daniel and Kathy while they're in the car talking about how he's excited to see Texas. Kathy asks Devin if he ever stayed with anyone before and tried to get okay. Devin is honest and says that he failed many times at many different things. Daniel tells Devin that he'll take care of anything he needs to take care of as long as he's doing what he's supposed to do. And Kathy appreciates Devin's honesty. Daniel says that Devin needs to find a drug program and he knows that from experience. Kathy says that Daniel and her met when they were both drunk in a bar. Daniel says when he met Kathy, that's her name, Kathy, right? Sorry. Um, Daniel says when he met Kathy, everything he did surrounded around alcohol. Daniel did meth, he did coke, and it was his brother that helped him to get clean. Daniel said that he found Alcoholics Anonymous and he has been clean from alcohol and all that other stuff since 1989. See, that's why I don't give up on people. I don't automatically think, oh my gosh, these people, there's no hope for them. There's always hope for people as long as they're alive. Daniel lets Devin know that if he goes back to his old way of living, he loses everything, including his place to live. Back with David, and today's a day that Aaron comes home from prison. 
And David says that he thinks he's ready to share his dwelling with someone he doesn't know because he's lived with many people in his life. David, you need a car wash, but that's besides the point. David is here at the correctional facility to pick up Aaron. And David says there are tens of thousands of people incarcerated and it's very hard to get your feet back on the ground. And I really hope guys, I really, uh, I'm saying that this could be a disaster just like the title of this show. But honestly, I am really, really pushing for these folks to come out into society and to do well. I never look at these folks like they're trash, like they're garbage, like they're like never going to be redeemed. Like, I really believe that there are people in this world that want to change, that will change and will take action and that aren't always going to be down at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Aaron says looking at the outside of the prison from the other side of the gate is a good feeling. Aaron says he's never going back there again. So Aaron says that David is a bit goofy. He says that he doesn't know David's profession and he said he never told him anything about himself. Mickey is getting out of jail the next day and this is the very first time that Marisol and Jim will be able to talk to him through video. Mickey could not hear them when the connection was made. He could not hear them and it seems like he couldn't see them. And Marisol says that when Mickey got frustrated, he was pacing back and forth. Marisol says that when someone is on something and they don't get something right away, that's that behavior that they have. She's wondering if he's clean. So the video wasn't working, but they were able to get Mickey on video chat. And they're talking about his release the next day, how he feels about it. Yes, sir. Well, what do you think about it? You, you, I mean, I should get out tomorrow and be released to Hamilton County. What's going on with Hamilton County? I got an initiation of administration of meth times two, theft, and then I violated that 15 years paper with them by not reporting. That means that you was on the run? Yeah, I was on the run. So Jim says that Mickey has additional charges that was news to the both of them. Mickey was on the run for two years. So it says here, Mickey is facing additional charges of eluding in two separate counties. So both charges must be resolved before Mickey will be released from jail. I don't know how this is going to work. Jim asks Mickey if he messes up, how long is he going to go to prison? And Mickey says 21 years. Like you have a newborn baby. They will be able to legally drink when Mickey gets out of jail. So Jim says to Mickey, you have a history of running. You're not going to run tomorrow, are you? And Mickey gives them his word that he's not going to run. And then Jim says, I'll see you tomorrow. Marisol says there are charges that Mickey did not tell them about. And Jim says now their radars are up. Um, your radars should have been up, actually. And Jim says that he's not going to allow somebody in his home to be deceptive when they're just trying to help him. Daniel's off to go retrieve Devin y'all know how reality shows are they literally keep repeating the same information they've said already so um we've already said this so you're not missing anything if you can't read this you're not missing anything Daniel's going to go meet Devin's sister Carissa in Colorado and they're going to pick up Devin together and after serving three years for various charges Devin will be released from the prison that day Daniel says that he's a little bit nervous pulling into Carissa's house he says it's because he doesn't know her but he'll have a lot of questions for her so he can get to know her Daniel says that she can probably tell him a little bit about Devin and they can go from there. Now, Carissa is Devin's sister and she says she really appreciates Daniel coming there to help Devin. Carissa says that her biggest concern, just like what I just said, literally, is that her brother is young and Daniel and them is a little up there in age. Okay. Daniel says the last time he stayed at Carissa's house, he used you know what and so that's why he can't stay there now none of your family want to help you the only people who are willing to help you are strangers something's definitely wrong with that carissa's not having that around her children so carissa talks to daniel about addiction basically needing to be maintained as far as not not doing drugs anymore right and Daniel's like, you know, I've been maintaining for 33 years. It's always a maintenance. And he tells Carissa, if he does any of that stuff, then he's going to be kicked out. And you know, he's going to do it. What, what motivation does Devin have not to do drugs in your house? I'm curious. 
Daniel has four rules for Devin coming into his house. You're giving a, a man who was locked up in prison rules to be imprisoned by. That's not going to go well for you. I'm just saying. So one of his rules is no lying. Okay, I have good luck trying to control that. Um, no overnight guests. The man can't. Look, I guess he's going to have to get a hotel or whatever outside. But he's probably going to be sneaking girls in. I mean, teenagers sneak people in. And this 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 man is 24 years old. I can promise you he's going to be sneaking people in. No corn. Change the C for the letter P. <laughs> you really think you're going to be able to control that? When he's going to have a phone and the internet, I'm sure. Anyway, but the last one is no, no um, illegal substances, which, okay, I agree with that one. Daniel says that they are going to be driving Devin's car back to Texas. So he's going to the car right now with Carissa to make sure there is no drug paraphernalia inside the car. And David says if he finds any drugs in this car, he's going to throw them out. Carissa and Daniel go through everything in the car and everything seems to be fine. Carissa says that she thinks there are things that Devin and Daniel will clash about. But Carissa says as a sister, she would tell Devin that these folks are pretty much his last shot and his last chance. We're back with Diaja and Annalisa and Veda on the way to go get Mark out of prison. Annalisa says that she thinks when she sees him, she'll be excited. Right now, she's just meditating. Basically, Diaja says that she is here for support. So Veda and Annalisa thank Diaja for driving them. And well, Veda says he'll thank her once they're there, whatever. Anyway, Diaja says the closer that she gets to the prison, the more nervous she's getting. So Annalisa shuts the conversation down once again. She says, we're going to get this young man and I don't want to talk no more about it. Veda says that he's very excited because it's his opportunity to help a young man who's been in prison for seven years. Annalisa says this is going to be the first time they're meeting him and they're going to see what he's really like. Veda says that Annalisa is a very giving person, but if she feels somebody's taking advantage, she's going to come out fighting. Veda says that he hopes that doesn't happen. So Mark is getting released after serving 7.5 years for a robbery and firearm possession. Cameras are prohibited on prison grounds, so they're meeting Mark in the parking lot near the facility. So they meet up with Mark finally. Mark is happy to be out of jail. He says that he's so glad to be out of those four walls, the scenery and all of it. Mark says that he's forever grateful to Annalisa and Veda to be able to get on his feet. Annalisa says that she's so happy to see Mark. He's being very respectful. He's showing her nothing but gratitude and respect so far. Veda says that Mark feels like family because Veda knows his family. Veda says that he seems like someone that he's known for a long time. So Mark goes over to Deaja and he says, so you're the one that's suspicious of everything. And Deaja says, oh yeah. And then, you know, they greet each other. They're over here having this like, hello, how you doing meeting. And then a car with some ladies pulls up and Diaja's like, who the hell are these people saying to herself? She didn't say it out loud. She's just looking around like, who is that? Mark is like, oh, I know who those people are. I think that's kind of rude that these, these folks here, Annalisa and Veda and Diaja are meeting Mark for the first time. And these random strangers just pull their ass up, come over here hugging Mark. They don't introduce themselves. They don't say anything to this family. They just pull right up next to the car, get out the car, and just go on to Mark. Annalisa says she doesn't know who these ladies are, and she's extremely surprised. Mark said that the girls that showed up are his homegirls. Um, they're cool. Your homegirls have no manners. I really hope Mark is joking with this next comment. I'm gonna let him say it, because I sure as hell ain't. Everything's just happening so, so fast. The girls that showed up, man, they're my homegirls. You know, we're, uh, we're cool, they're tight. I mean, they got love for me. Yeah, the girls were supposed to show up early, so I got them a Naj in the parking lot before you know I met Annalisa and Beta. <laughs> Keep it hush, sneaky leak, whatnot. You know, it just didn't work out that way. So it was kind of awkward. They pulled up. It was like you're late. <laughs> man. He got a harem of females coming to have a Menage, You know what? in the middle of nowhere do you realize that's illegal and you just got out of jail i wanted to think that he was joking but he was dead freaking serious annalisa says that mark is acting like he's oh so surprised by these girls appearances but no she knows that he knew about it and she feels like she was played annalisa says that she feels like he hasn't been honest and that's not a good way to start with her 
Annalisa says she doesn't know if he's going home with them or her. She really doesn't have any idea. Annalisa says that she's not trusting him. She can already see that he thinks he's slick. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.